Matthew chapter 20, verse, verses 1 through 16. And you'll see there at the top the parable of the vineyard laborers. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went about, out about the third hour. He, started, he, he went out early in the morning. Okay? So then he went out about the third hour. He saw others that were standing in the marketplace. They were standing around because they didn't have any job. Nobody employed them. Now the ones he went out early, he employed some, but these, these guys weren't doing anything. So in the, he goes on the third hour, he saw others standing, and he said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Then he went out about the sixth hour and the ninth hour. And he did likewise. In other words, he said to them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatever, whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Not everybody's doing the same amount of work, are they? One person starts at the beginning, the other one three hours later, the other one six hours later, the other one nine hours later, right? right, right. So not everybody's doing the same thing. And about the 11th hour he went out and he found others standing idle. And he says to them, why stand you here all day idle? And they said, because no man has hired us. He saith unto them, go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall you receive. You'll notice up here when he agreed with the laborers for a penny a day. So initially when he started... He offered the first ones a penny a day, but then to the others, he said, whatever is right, I will give you. So none of these guys expected to get a penny a day, except for the ones that initially started in the morning. In fact, I don't know any employer that would do that, but let's say, let's just say that uh, normal wage is $12 an hour where you work. Now, I don't know, we all do different things, but let's just say it's a normal hour. So somebody said, he says, you know, I want you to work on Saturday. Victor, I want you to work on Saturday. I want you to come in. I want you to come in first thing in the morning, just like you always do. I want you to work all day. And I want you to work 12 hours. And I'm going to give you 12 hours for every hour, $12 for every hour that you work, Right? So then I tell somebody else there, I want you to come about, you know, the, the, the third hour. So let's say you start at 6 o'clock in the morning, third hour be 9, right? But I don't tell you how much you're going to get paid. Well, you, you know it's not a whole day's wages. So you're expecting, well, you're not going to get that much, right? And then the guy, six hours, he's, he's expecting, well, I'm, I'm probably going to get half as much as the other guy, right? And then you got the nine hours, and of course... He could have went every hour, right? So when the eve, even was come, that's the uh, way of saying when the evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last to the first. So when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. Now how much was the, the first group early in the morning told that they were going to get penny here are these people only worked for an hour and the guy gave them a penny well when you see that and you know you work 12 times as much what would you think man I'm going to get a lot more than I thought when they came and were hired about the 11th hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, in other words, the first group, the initial group that worked all 12 hours, they supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. 
So when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought or worked for one hour, and thou hast made them equal to us, which have borne the burden and the heat of the day. Now, I don't care who you are, anybody would probably side with these guys. They would say, wait a minute. You know, (laughs) especially if you were in a union, exactly. We should, you know, if I'm doing twice as much work, I should get paid twice as much wages. If I'm doing four times as much work, I should get four times as much, right? But the landowner, he said to them, friend... I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Now, did they agree for a penny? They shouldn't have opened up their mouth. When they agreed and made a covenant, right? That was the deal. You were going to get a penny. So you really don't have anything to criticize the guy who gave you a job. But it just doesn't sit right. It just isn't fair. And I know I've been in this Christianity thing for a long time, and I look around and sometimes I think, but it's just not fair. You look around, you say, you know, brother so-and-so has this, and sister so-and-so has that, and look what I got. And it's just not fair. And besides that, I work twice as much as them. How many, how many have, have you ever felt like, you certainly have known people that were complaining in the church, murmuring about their situation, right? So he said, take that thine is, in other words, take what I've given you and go your way. I will give unto this last even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first, and the first last, for many be called, but few are chosen. Okay, so all that's tied together, and all that comes together, what Jesus said, and we're going to examine this a little bit. There's been many, many preachers preach this message or teach this message from different perspectives. And we we would understand that. Not everybody's going to see the same thing, right? But let me tell you the popular teaching. The popular teaching suggests that the penny, or uh, the the word there was denarius. Okay, denarius was a penny. Or what we would call a penny in our economy. They called it denarius. But denarius was the standard day's wages for a laborer. You know, if you make $100 a day, your wage, your standard wage, $100. If you make the $12 an hour and it, you got an eight-hour day, that's almost $100, right? So you would get almost $100 for a day's wage. So that would be the denarius. But in those days, things were much different than they were in our day. Because in our day, you can work at, over here at this one place... You can go over here to the same job, you know, doing the same job, and get paid a lot more money. That doesn't seem fair. You're doing the same amount of work, and then you can come over here and get more money. Right? So it it's, it's all depends on what they want to pay you. <clears throat> so what the popular teaching is, is that this parable is a, is a teaching about this, uh, that the penny represented... Salvation. Okay, that's the popular teaching, that the penny represented salvation. Did the penny represent salvation? The penny, the penny was talking about works. And it was talking about really the attitude of the people that were doing the work. Right? You're not going to be blessed in this kingdom of God if you're always criticizing the work that you have to do. Did the wage they received actually represent, or supposed to represent salvation? I would say no, because they worked for the wage. You do not work for salvation. Jesus worked for your salvation. 
There's nothing you can add to your salvation. You accept your salvation. Otherwise, if it wasn't that way, it would not be by grace alone. And if it's not by grace alone, you would be under the law. And you would have to keep the Sabbath, and you would have to keep the dietary laws, and you would have to, you would have to keep that whole law of Moses. And I thank God I do not have to keep that law of Moses because they couldn't keep it either. There's only one man that I know that was able to keep it. You know what his name was? That's right. He was the only one without sin. If you had anything that was in violation of the law, it was sin, right? Okay, here's another popular uh, idea here. Some say that the different times represent the various church ages or dispensation. For example, in the parable, we had the first hour, the third hour, the sixth hour, the eleventh hour. And in fact, we have a, I have a parenthesis here because uh, they will point to you that say that uh, this actually compares with the parable of the virgins in Matthew 25. At, at midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Remember that one? And we haven't gotten there yet, but we're going to talk about that one as well. So you see there's even a 12th hour in, in, in what, what this group in, in their interpretation would say that these are actual represent 12 distinct periods of time. And in during those periods of time, the end, the, the, the final one, the midnight cry was when the bridegroom comes, right? That's the second coming of Christ. And the first has to be the beginning when the church began. And so all the way down through history, just like Pastor was saying, all the way down through history, you had people that were coming into the church. Not everybody started when the apostles walked on the earth. Not everybody had the same cross to bear. Not everybody did the same job. Not everybody was meant to do the same job. Now, if you divide this up, it comes out to something like this. The first hour, if it, if it really represents that, then the first hour would be a, a, a represent the beginning of the church in about 33 A.D. because that's when Jesus died, right? Around that time. Now, that's, that's saying Jesus was born zero which we don't, nobody really knows. Was it 0? Was it 2 B.C.? Was it 4 B.C.? You can check in your, in your uh, if you've got a study Bible, and it'll give you different information, depending on who the publisher is. So anyway, if the first hour was at 33 A.D., and there's uh, like 12 hours be, until the second coming. Then the third hour was, would be about 400 years had passed. Uh, the sixth hour, about 1,000 years had passed. The 11th hour, 2,000 years have passed. And you know what? There's been over 2,000 years since Jesus came. So you, you can do the math here. And, uh, I mean, this, this holds water. This makes sense, right? But I don't think we need to read all that into it because there's no way we can prove any of this anyway about these time periods, right? That these hours represented. The problem was God's grace. He said, I can have grace on whoever I choose. That's what the man in the parable said, right? The problem was on the attitude of the laborer thinking they deserved more than they agreed. Right? Or entitled. So then the third one here, another popular teaching is that everyone will receive the same reward when they get to heaven, as we are all equal in the eyes of God. That's a popular teaching, and they said, well, that, that's what it represents. Everybody's going to get the same thing. Well, is that true? We're going to look at some scriptures. Not everybody's going to get the same thing. Okay, so you can't pull this parable and make it say that because you got you you can't just use one reading and base your doctrine. You have to pull the whole thing together. And that's why we're saying the popular is this. Popular interpretation is that this represents that everybody is going to get the same thing because that's what that's what they were treated. Uh, everyone was told that they were going to get a penny and everybody got the same reward. Another popular teaching is that everyone will receive the same reward when they get to heaven 
when you listen to different people, you, if you go ahead and you go get a book, a commentary on the parables, you'll find this one's talking about the first thing. This one's talking about the second. This one's talking about the third. And we got a fourth one here. You can't just take what somebody says. You have to take the whole counsel of God. Uh, number four. What does the Bible say about us receiving our eternal reward for the work we've done in this life? That's what you have to focus on. Because when you start focusing on that, you'll realize this parable is not talking about the eternal life. It's not talking about you all going to get the same reward when you get there. It's talking about having the attitude and the stuff that you do because you're working for God. He is, you know, he's your boss. Right. And whatever he gave you to do, right. whether it's more, you know, if John's doing more than I am, it's none of John's business. And it's none of my business. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Lord's business, right? And when you start looking at that, you think, this is talking about the people of God. The people of God today are the church. Don't you see this in the church? Don't you see these attitudes in the church? One person thinks they're better than the other person. And, and you know, they, you don't know what God called that person to do. And what God, you, 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 most of us don't even know what God called us to do. Right. And if we would just be focusing on what God called us to do, we wouldn't worry about what everybody else is doing, right? Matthew chapter 23. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master. Rabbi, anybody know what rabbi means? Teacher. Teacher. So Jesus is saying, you shouldn't be called, look to be called teacher. That title. Uh, you shouldn't be uh, wanting to be taught or, or called our father. Because there's only one father in heaven, right? Some people just like to be called pastor. That's, you're, you're running dangerously there because when, when, you, when you're fulfilling the mission of a, uh, a pastor, that's a whole lot different than you wanting to be called pastor. I, I've seen people like that who they want to make sure you call me pastor because I, I, you know, that, that's a uh, uh, thing that I earned. Well... Why don't you be more concerned? Now, again, attitude. Be more concerned about being the pastor instead of getting called the pastor. In fact, if you are the pastor, then the people will call you pastor, right? right. So be not, uh, you call rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ. And all you are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is the greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoa, there's kind of a twist, but nobody wants to be on the bottom. But he says, whoever's the greatest will end up being the servant. That's kind of scary. You got to know, yes, you can't be a leader if you don't know how to follow. You can't be a teacher if you don't know how to study. Right? And what does the Bible say? Study to show thyself approved. Exactly. And verse 12, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that humbles himself shall be exalted. That whole scripture has to do with perspective, right? It's perspective of about us doing what we were called to do and answering to God alone. I, I'll tell you, it's, it's very peaceful when your ministry and your life, you know you answer to one. Amen. God never told you to put any man or woman in any prophet or prophetess between you and him. He gave you the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God. If you got the Holy Ghost... You can go in your own prayer room. You don't need somebody telling you, you know, putting hands on you and telling you, uh, thus saith the Lord to you. I mean, they could confirm something God said, but don't let them dominate you 
you go to God. But let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7. We have another one here. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth. In other words, one person plants, the other person comes and waters. They're equal. They're equal. You don't, if you're a planter, plant. If you're the waterer, water. If you're the singer, sing. If you're the bass player, play the bass. If you're the pastor, pastor. Right? He said, but it's God who gives the increase. It's not the person that planted. It's God. It's not the person that watered. It's God, right? Now he that plants and he that waters are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Now here's where that comes in. We are not saved by our works. But we will get rewarded on our works. And a big thing God is saying here is we're all called to do something and our attitude is important on how we go ahead and do that. This is one reason we brought up the scripture because we want to see that every man will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Now, if you get to heaven, Jesus starts do- you know, doling out the rewards and you didn't get you didn't get what the pastor got. Whose fault is it? It's your fault. You say, but I didn't have a chance to be pastor. I didn't have the gift to be pastor. It doesn't matter. Because God says you and him are equal. He gave you responsibility. He gave you responsibility. Now, if, if, if pastor, if he just, if the pastor gets up there and he just plays the guitar... And he's not pastoring. God called him the pastor. Now God might have called him to play, you know, do praise and worship and, and pastor. But so many get sidetracked on what God called them to do. It's important before you do what God's called you to do to find out what God's called you to do. And God will show you because I know that for a fact, because how is he going to hold you accountable to do it unless he'll reveal to you what it is you're supposed to do, right? However, if we don't ask, we may never know. We are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Now, this is Paul, the apostle, talking. He said, now, I did my part. He said, I have been called to lay the foundation for you, for the church. You weren't called to lay the foundation. In other words, you don't come rip out the writings of Paul said, I don't need that. I got the Holy Spirit. You better build on what Paul said because Paul's the one who was called to lay the foundation. He said, I have laid the foundation and another will build thereon, but let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. It doesn't sound to me like everybody's going to get the same thing. He said here, take heed. What you do, Right? And then he makes it very clear in verse 11. He says, for, there's, uh, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And he, uh, elsewhere it says he's the cornerstone. You can imagine this massive temple. And Jesus himself is at the head of the corner. Or if you want to think about it like this. Think about a pyramid. And at the top, the piece that goes on the top... That's kind of a miniature of the whole thing. It looks just like it. It's just smaller, right? And only that's going to fit. You put a square block on top of the pyramid instead of that pointy thing, and it's just not going to work, is it? So, Jesus Christ is the foundation. Now, if any man build upon the foundation, 
Now, look at all the different varieties. Gold, you can build gold. Silver, precious stones. And you know, there's a whole lot of precious stones. Emeralds and rubies and sapphires and diamonds, right? Wood, hay, and stubble. Now, what do you think would be the best thing you could do for yourself? Lay gold on the foundation, silver on the foundation, stubble on the foundation. What do you, what do you think would be the best? Gold. gold. And, and you know, this is why the word of God is really quite simple. It's obvious that gold is of much more value than silver, right? And it goes... And then precious stones, and then wood, hay, and stubble. In fact, wood, hay, and stubble will burn up. And look at here in verse 13. He said, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. In other words, when you stand up before God, all of your works that you have done will be accounted for. And there will be like a judgment of fire. And whatever doesn't burn up, that's what you get to keep. Now, gold won't burn. And the silver won't burn. And even those precious stones, they're not going to burn. But wood, hay, stubble. Yeah. Concrete. Concrete will bust up. It's fervent heat. <laughs> Every man's work shall be manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, in other words, remains, which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Does it sound to you like everybody's going to get the same reward regardless of what they do? Now, does it make sense that everybody who gets offered salvation, that they all get the same salvation? Yes. We all get the same salvation. But, you know, what we are, need to be concerned about is what do we do after we get the salvation? There is nothing you have to do to make it to heaven except for receive Jesus Christ as Savior. He's done it all. But you are charged with a commission to do something for the, for the kingdom of God. Amen. And that's what you need to be concerned about. And, and uh, if your work abides or remains when it goes through this, uh, this test, he will receive a reward. But if any man's work shall be burned... Wood, hail, stubble. He shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. In other words, what that's telling you is your salvation has nothing to do with your works. If all your works burn up. Now, some of the reasons that your works may burn up is attitude. Why are you doing what you're doing? Are you doing what you're doing to get attention? Are you doing what you're doing so everyone can praise you how wonderful you are? Or are you doing what God has called you to do because he put it in your heart? And you know, I'll tell you, when you're working from your heart, doing the thing that you know God's called you to do, you really feel good about it, don't you? How, how many know what I'm talking about? You feel good about it. And it doesn't matter what it is that God... Because I don't know what God told you to do. You don't know what God told me to do. You're not, you're not responsible for anybody else's commission or mission. You're responsible for you only. And who's responsible? It's going to be you. It's going to be you. If you don't do it, what are you going to walk away with? Zippo. If you let somebody cloud you up, 
or confuse you, it's on you. In fact, you know what God's going to say when you start crying about it? He's going to say, I gave you, I gave you the word. He's going to point to other people. He's going to say, you know, Bill was in a similar situation, but he took the word. Mary was in a similar situation, but she, she read my word. You didn't read my word. How are you supposed to know what it is? We need to be taught in the church.